Now look at, let's look at the uh, practical example of using this parity, which is called a currency carry trade. trade. So currency carry trade means you buy currency with high interest rate countries and fund the purchase, this purchase by borrowing the, in a currency with low interest rate without any hedging. So that's important. The currency carry trade is actually involved the risk because there's no hedging. And so you invest high interest country, right? And you finance this through low interest. So you can take these differences. This is profit. So carry trade is profitable as long as the interest rate differential is greater than the appreciation of the funding currency against the investment currency. So let's look at that. Japan is very typical case. So since the interest rate in Japan has been near zero, so it's, this is called the N carry trade, yen carry trade. Yen is most popular one. So you basically finance through yen and invest different country and you make a profit. Now US dollar also became another popular funding currency because now Fed has a lot. Fed actually come, uh, used a very low interest rate policy since the 2008. And popular investment currency is including Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, British pound, because they are have relatively high interest rate. So there's an example, suppose you borrow in Japanese yen and invest in Australian dollars. Now your carry trade, so if you believe the, that, well, interest rate differences, so that's the Australian dollar minus yen, right? So under this uncovered IR play, it should be close to, right? Exchange this expected rate changes in interest, uh, the, the exchange rate. So if this is greater than Exchange rate appreciation of the yen against the Australian dollar during this carry period, then you're profitable because you still make money. All right, you still make this money. So suppose say interest of N is like say 1% and interest in Australian dollar is like 5%, then that difference is 4%, right? So you basically make 4%. This 4% may be lost if the value of N increases because if value of N increases, then you have to pay higher interest to Japan. Japanese yen, right? But if it is lower than 4%, because these differences are very close to exchange rate changes based on the uncovered ILP, right? So uncovered ILP said, these changes is very close to interest rate changes, right? So these 4% changes, just a profit, unless, the N appreciate less than 4%. If N appreciate more than 4%, then you have to pay higher interest to Jap Japanese yen, right? Because the 1% is now interest in Jap the Japanese yen, and then the other 
like say if the appreciation is like five percent then you actually eventually have to pay around six percent interest because one percent is from the the interest rate and the five percent is from the exchange rate changes and because exchange rate changes is at, at very close to the interest rate changes right so this is directly goes the cost to the investor which means that you are not profitable because this is higher than five percent so unless exchange rate appreciation i mean appreciation of the low interest currency it's greater than the interest rate differences, then you can make money. You are profitable. This is called the currency carry trade. Currency carry trade. Yen may be also depreciate. The M may depreciate too. If Yen depreciate, then you actually make your, your invest more, even more profitable because you now make your interest rate effectively a negative, right? If it is appreciate, then, you know, the as I explained, you start to lose money from the carry trade. So carry trade is not un the riskless investment uh, because you are not hedging, but you don't hedge because you basically want to take the these differences. If you need to hedge, then the cost of hedging is probably the same as the interest differences. So you don't hedge, you just make it uncovered. What you can do is you bet on that risk. So currency trade is again risk, risky investment, especially when the exchange rate is volatile. And exchange rate is quite volatile. So you have to bet on the right timing and the right way under right expectation. You see the interest rate spread versus the exchange rate, uh, Australian dollar versus Japanese yen, and you see a lot of volatility of the exchange rate relative to the interest rate spread. So it means that you should be very careful. Sometimes you are not better off. So currency trade example, suppose one year borrowing rate in dollar is 2.01%. UK, you can borrow at 1% lending rate. So the direct spot ask rate, so if this, the spot ask exchange rate is $1.25 per pound, then trade to borrow million will owe 1.201, I mean 0201 million, so one, 1 million, $20,100 because of the interest rate is 2.01%. Now you trade this, this 1 million per pound to and the spot generate 800,000 pounds and you invest this 800,000 pounds that at 1% then you're, you're getting 808,000 pounds, right? Right. So currency carry trade may be profitable if the spot bid rate prevailing one year is high enough that his, this 888,000 will sell for at least $1,020,100, right? So when it means that if, if, so this, if you have, you can, so you basically have to, that's your investment, right? So you invest here and you have to pay back this one. Then if this is greater than this, then you make better deal. So if the, the, the bid rate, bid exchange rate is 1.2625, then it's indifferent. But if it is higher than that, then actually the pounds gets more expensive than you make money. So that's how currency trade work. Now there is interest rate parity doesn't work all the time. There's a reason because you have transaction costs that maybe may 
that make us difficult to satisfy the interest rate parity. Because the borrowing lending is costly job. Okay. There may be bid as spread, which is another transaction cost to overcome the spot and the, um, the foreign spot rate in each. So there, there should be some transaction cost. There's also capital control from the government. Sometimes the risk import the export money through taxes or other bans, then this parity doesn't work. So you basically have the graphically show that the well, if the blue line is IRP line, then you may be uh, C or D. Now, if the transaction cost is a gray area, then C is actually profitable, but D is not profitable, which means that if you are on the gray area, you don't trade, right? Because it's still unprofitable. That's why, that's why the interest rate parity doesn't all work all the time. But if it is too free far, like it's that C, then you trade so that you, your uh, condition actually fall into the gray area at least. So that's, that's it for the, uh, this is it for the interest rate parity. Then the next video uh, will cover the power purchase parity.